Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. you listeners out there, this is the Hello Self podcast, and I am your host, Patricia Leonard. The mission of our podcast is to help you turn those can'ts into cans and those dreams into plans. So that means maybe getting your dreams and goals off that someday shelf and start living them now. The way we help you get started and encourage you and inspire you is through guests that we have on our show, like today, Yvette Freeman. Can you say hello, Yvette? Hi. (laughs) Hi, everyone. Uh, And I'll give you a little bit more details and then uh, about Yvette, and then we'll turn it over to her because you're going to be amazed at her story and what she's doing. I just want to tell you that the way we help you is through our guest. And that's why Yvette is here today, because she's got a heart for helping other entrepreneurs or others who have visions for their life, helping them move forward on that. The way we do that, and I do believe that in everybody's story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. The way they live their dreams and manifest their dreams are just strategies that you might look at and say, if your vet did that, maybe I could too. And you know, you'll have a resource because she has, I'm going to tell you more about what she has that can help you as a resource, as finding resources for yourself. But that's what our guests are about is helping you move forward on your dreams. So now just a little bit so you'll understand who Yvette Freeman is. I'll give you an overview and then she will tell you the real story. (laughs) Yvette Freeman is the owner of Red Angle Media, LLC, publisher of the Envoy Guide magazine, a beautiful magazine. You'll want to learn more about that and we'll give you how to do that, her website and how to contact her at the end of the show. After working more than 20 years in corporate America and nonprofit marketing and communications, she opened Red Angle Photography, a mobile photograph and headshot photography studio. She did that in 2016. Within three years, she became an award-winning photographer. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that you have to be a photographer to learn from your vet, but you can move forward. You can see the things that she did to move forward. Within three years, she became an award-winning photographer with 18 image competition awards. In July 2023, she became an internationally recognized photographer, receiving an honorable mention award in the prestigious Pre de la Photography. You can see I'm not from France. <laughs> an international juried image competition based in Paris, France. She was honored by the Western Women's Business Center this year with its Bubbles Griffin Award for her dedication and years of service to women's entrepreneurship. You see, she is here to help you as well as to introduce more about her own future goals and what she's doing. She's a graduate of Bennett College and she is present uh, in North Carolina and she presently lives in Zirconia, North Carolina with her husband, George, and Siberian Husky. So I'd like to introduce to you again, Yvette Freeman, and I'm going to turn it over to her to start her story wherever she would like, and then I'll jump in every once in a while with a few questions. (laughs) Okay, Yvette, it's your turn now. (laughs) Thank you, Patricia. Thank you for having me. This is quite an honor, and I'm so pleased to talk with you again after we met a few years ago at the SWIFT Summit, so I'm happy to be here. 
basically my story. Let's see. Like you said, I started my photography business in 2016. I had always had a camera my entire life, as far as I can remember, taking pictures of family and at events and things like that. But uh, it wasn't until 2015 that I decided to try to make a go of it as a professional because all of my family and friends were saying, hey, you're really good at that. You ought to start making a business out of it. And that was around the time my mother had developed Alzheimer's. And my husband and I, we actually had to take over and deal with her and try to help her get the resources she needed because she lived three hours away and we were getting calls in the middle of the night. And at the time I was working for an, another company. And so I figured I needed something to do where I had flexibility in my schedule and photography allowed me to do that. Mm. So that's when I opened Red Angle Photography in 2016. And like most small business owners had a hard time just getting exposure, getting out there because wow. here in this area of Hender um, Zirconia, Hendersonville, which is about 30 miles south of Asheville, there are a ton of photographers, wedding photographers, landscape photographers, and so it was a struggle just trying to get out there and get business. And so I've been doing that. And what were um, some of the things that you did to get out there that you might have done to break through that barrier? Uh, going to networking events, going to chamber of commerce events, trying to meet as many business people as possible. Everywhere I went, I always had uh, little brochures that I printed up of my mm. work so that I could hand out to people if they were interested. Right. And just doing a a study of seeing what the other photographers in the area were actually offering as well and trying to say, okay, is my work even good enough to yes. uh, compare to some of these other photographers? And starting out, like most artists and professionals, you always wonder, are you good enough? Um, to be in this marketplace. And so I also started attending photography conferences, started learning more about photography, the techniques, the lighting. One of the things that I pride myself on is standing out with my lighting with photography. There are a lot of photographers, they're natural light photographers. They don't use any artificial light. I incorporate both, but I love using lights so that my subjects stand out and it looks much more like fine art photography, in my opinion. So just learning as much as I could about my craft and honing it. I started getting in touch with local models and photographing them free of charge so that I could get more practice as well. And they would get photos in the process as well, but it really helped me to figure out, okay, what do I want to focus on? What do I want to learn that I really need to make sure that I'm good at? So a lot of that, just trying to make sure that I was as good as a photographer as I thought I should be to be charging people. Yes. Yeah. You know, those kind of things. It's very interesting. You said I networked a lot of people. That is how they get out there. And people we want, I, I know as much as we do on internet anymore, but people really like to see somebody in person. That's how I fell in love with who you are and your work is I met you in person. And oh. it's, yeah, and that networking is key. I know sometimes we think it might be a waste of time, but I really like that strategy a lot too. And then just taking photographs free of charge just to tease, no, I don't know if it's tease, but as a marketing strategy, just to get out there so people could see your work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. Um, because just getting to practice myself mm. and models would share the photos on their social media and I would put it on mine and also put it in my marketing materials. One of the things I started doing really early on was creating marketing PDFs. So that if somebody was interested or if I was emailing somebody, I could say, hey, here's a sample of my work yes. in a PDF brochure. But I continue to do that. My pricing and welcome guide, it's just a brochure. I think it's about maybe 12. Sometimes it gets up to 20 pages because there are so many photographs that I love that I've taken. <laughs> and I want people to be able to see the type of work that I do. And that really helps because a lot of times 
And even now I tell people, print your photos, do something with them other than just digital, because once you can see a full size print or see it in a brochure or something, you can really see the elements of the photo and, and have it jump out of the page for them. Right. You're, I like that so much because you're absolutely right. When we see um, the photo, then we can start to imagine ourselves. I like this one. I want a photograph like that. Or I want a shot like that. And I think we can start to see what uh, we might like. And I like the idea of a lot of different uh, samples for people because not every person is going to be the same. And another strategy that you offered that is so, it, um, I think it's overlooked a lot. And I really appreciate what you said about that is you would use some free just to get them to market for you. So your marketing outreach was not just yours, but you used other people. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Word of mouth always helps because number one, it's no cost to you, but it's also a testimonial when other people are saying, Hey, this is a great photographer. Here are some beautiful images. That says a lot because people want to know, Hey, is this somebody that I can trust? Is it somebody who my friends would use? Yes. So word of mouth helps a lot. Yes. And, and it's just the kind of thing that we don't feel quite a, as alone in our strategy or our marketing or our move forward if we know there are other people that are speaking up for us too and we can build a, a network just from that. And I'm sure you probably have helped others with their business just from what you learned about. I have oh. an, I, I know you're probably going to tell us more about this, but I'm very interested in learning how did this Envoy magazine come mm -hmm. into being and what caused you, what was your hello self moment or your awareness that caused you to create a magazine? That, I, I'm so impressed. Not a just an <laughs> online, it's a paper, turn your page magazine, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is yeah, the latest it. issue. It's uh, the Envoy Guide and I had, have my entire life I love reading and I love picking up magazines wherever I go and here in western North Carolina my husband and I we have lived here since 2010 and there are some beautiful magazines in this area about business about art and culture but one of the things I noticed was there were no magazines that regularly featured women and especially minorities people of color Right. Uh, his, whether they're Hispanic, Black, Native American, LGBTQ, any of the underrepresented groups, none of them in the 13 years that we've been here since, I think I can count on uh, maybe two fingers how many times a person of color appeared on any cover of any of those magazines. Yes. It was during 2020 when we were all in lockdown and my husband and I were watching Netflix shows and I was thinking about the magazine because, like I said, I hadn't seen anything that actually featured other people of color and especially women entrepreneurs as well. And there was a show called Altered Carbon that I started watching. And there were two seasons and the second season featured an African-American actor who's now Captain America, Anthony Mackie. But his character was called The Last Envoy. And I won't go into a lot about it, but the term envoy just really stood out for me and made sure I, I looked up the definition and it actually means a representative or messenger. And I liked that. And as I was coming up with the concept for the magazine, because during 2020 also we're in lockdown, I couldn't do any photography really because we couldn't go out. They didn't want people to congregate or do anything. And my business basically came to a, a stop like everybody else's. And so also seeing on the news, all these other businesses that were going out of business because they couldn't adapt to the new norm. They couldn't find ways to market themselves or serve their customers in a new way that fell in line with the COVID lockdown and the regulations. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking there needs to be some way for people who are struggling 
to get information. How do you keep managing your business? How do you start up a business? Because there are so many people also quitting their jobs, starting their own businesses. And I wanted to find a way that would allow me to help those people in some way and not do the same mistakes that I was making that I know I continue to make to this yeah. day in my business. So I thought about the magazine and I was talking with a local newspaper ad representative and she was saying, hey, we really need something like that in this area. So to get back to the the show itself, premise of the Altered Carbon was that people were implanted with a device called a stack and it housed their personality, their knowledge, their entire essence. And it could only be destroyed if that stack was destroyed itself. But you could transplant that stack into a different body. So essentially you could live forever. Wow. And my idea for the Envoy was this is not only information it's your personality of the writers their knowledge um it's the essence of our society it's information to help us improve ourselves and to keep going and as that information is stored in the magazine itself it can also be transferred to other people and then it becomes their stack and it becomes their essence because now they have new knowledge now they have more information and it's also not only the stack, but it's the messenger. It's the messenger of the writers. It's the messenger of the people I'm featuring. Yeah. So hopefully it, that makes sense. But I wanted something oh, where yes. people can use it to improve their lives. I do feature spotlights on entrepreneurs, community members, and creative artists all over the U.S. I also have been lucky enough to have uh, experts who are also business owners, who are college professors, who are deans, to write educational articles and informational articles that help the readers with their uh, business startup, with their business management, finance, taxes, health and wellness tips. So it's now gone from being more of a business magazine to a con general consumer magazine, because business owners are also family members. They're also parents. They're also children, because I have featured a, a young 14-year-old boy who had his own business. So this is people from all walks of life who hopefully when they read the magazine, they're getting new information to help themselves no matter what stage of life they're in. And I love the fact that your magazine touches all ages. Mm -hmm. Like you said, this 14-year-old, can you imagine what that does to other young people that are thinking possibilities for themselves. After all, you said that your interest started when you were a young girl with a camera in your hand. Oh, so absolutely. I think, yeah, I think a lot of times our interests when we were small end up being our business or our journey focus, if you will. And I really like that a lot. I, another thing that I'm listening and hearing is that it was COVID-19 and your mother's health mm -hmm. that also were major hello self moments for you that shifted your journey. So we don't always have to think that it's over because things look, they don't look so good. And I see that what you're saying to people is it caused me to shift, but the shift ended up being a good uh, shift. You went from the job you had to starting your own business. And yes. so I think that sometimes we think, oh, this is the end, but maybe it's the beginning. Oh, absolutely. I just turned 55 and I just started this in uh, 2016. So I was in my late 40s, early 50s when I made a complete career change. Yes. And most people are looking to stay with the company they're with yes. and keep getting their tenure, retirement, or, or 401ks. And I went into business for myself. And I think that is something that a lot of people are afraid of doing because they don't have that security of having a company that's giving them health insurance, that's contributing towards their retirement. You have to do that on your own. And it really makes you think, okay, I have to struggle now. I have to work for myself and really work hard to make sure that this works. 
because you can get really settled into, I think, a rut basically, or get into that comfort zone where you don't really branch out and learn more about yourself if you're working for somebody else. And for me, I really enjoy making sure that I'm the one who's in control of my life, in control of my schedule, and I'm not working myself to death to make somebody else rich. I I love that so much. And I, I don't want to talk about my stuff, but I'm going to introduce this one thing. When you said get out of your comfort zone, that is so true. We put those dreams and goals on that someday shelf. And then when it comes time to maybe pull them off, we say, oh, no, I've got a job. I've got insurance. I get in my comfort zone. And years ago, I wrote a book, Wearing High Heels in a Flip-Flop World, because my brand is high heels. But I think the thing that you just said is that is wearing high heels in a flip-flop world is not about wearing high heels in a flip-flop world. It's about getting out of your comfort zone and looking at a higher level of possibility for yourself. That's the stepping into the high, high heel of yourself. And I think it is so true. We buy in. I've been uh, involved in so many business downsizings, corporate downsizings, and that's exactly they had no idea what they could do. And so you just you just broke that model, you, that glass ceiling, if you will, that this is as far as I can go and I couldn't do anything. I'm too old. So what a powerful message for you to give the listeners is started at any age. After all, wasn't it Grandma Moses that started painting in her 80s? Yes. <laughs> my entire career now is all about getting out of my comfort zone. I am originally very much of an introvert. I have been shy my entire life. The fact wow. that for me, when I first started photography, I was just doing landscapes, sunsets, things like that. But I realized I much prefer photographing people. I like that interaction. I like the connection. And when I look at a photograph of a person, I feel like I want to know who that person is yes. when I look at the eyes. And that's why I tell people I prefer doing photography of portraits, of families, of people, because I can sit there and stare at a photo of someone's face for quite a long time versus if I'm just looking at a landscape photo, which landscape photos are beautiful, yes. but I'm not getting moved by it the way I would looking into the eyes of a person. Yes. And getting out of my comfort zone has also included the networking part. Just I just did a mega networking event with the Chamber of Commerce where it's like five minute dating where everybody's at different tables and you've got one minute to do your pitch and you're <laughs> rotating through all of these tables and meeting people. And for me, when I first went, that was the scariest thing because I'm here I am having to talk about myself to about a hundred or so people. And for me, that was a huge moment where I had to say, okay, I need to stop being shy and really know how to focus on what my message is and try to let people know this is what I offer. That was a big part of getting out of my comfort zone. The photography itself too, just photographing strangers going to events and doing that. It's all about getting out of your comfort zone so that you can learn what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, yes. and what do you enjoy the most? I actually, I look forward to the mega networking events because they're actually fun. Yes. <laughs> um, not scary for me anymore. And I think that is another great strategy to offer the listeners today because the mega event, because it makes us narrow our message. And I am a firm believer that, including me, women talk too much and they dilute their message with too many words. Mm -hmm. I was told when I was in corporate America by my boss, who happened to be a male, said, Patricia, you have good ideas, but you try to sell them too much. It's almost like you oversell. He said, give me three points and I'll listen. Okay, the first reason is this, Mr. Jones. The second reason I'd like to talk to you is this. And the third reason I have a business idea or whatever we say, but three ideas. And I love that mega networking event idea because 
we have, just like you said, we have to narrow our message and get the point across then in a very short period of time. So mm -hmm. another great strategy, I think. And I like the fact that you said you're basically an introvert because I think that the strategy that you've taken is you've broken through in ways that are comfortable for you, like networking. It may not have been comfortable initially, but it allowed you to at least meet one person because you may have had a mission that said, I'm going to this networking event today and I'm going to create, I'm going to get to know at least two people here. So you had a purpose when you went, or I'm going to tell them about my, so another great strategy or if you will a breakthrough for our listeners um, oh absolutely and one thing I wanted to mention too was okay, yeah. once I started the magazine because it was also a showcase for my photography because I photograph every cover they're usually local people but I oh, have okay. gone to all the way to Texas to photograph a feature subject but it also led to more photography work because it gave my photography more exposure so one thing that, and I had not thought of this before, was that it basically created a whole new job for me. And it's become a full-time job. And people know me not only for my photography, but for the magazine itself. So it's a great way of, that I think people should think outside the box of what are some other ways I can not only incorporate what I'm good at in this one area, but how can I showcase that in another way that is also possibly revenue generating or gives me a little bit more exposure in a different way. Oh, fantastic. So it's linking your, your expertise. You're, you've got an expertise in photography and now linking that with uh, the magazine. So it's beginning to say, what are all the things that I have already that I could pull together? And I love that idea of showcasing through they can see now she does photography and then she uses that in her magazine oh my gosh see oh, those are great yeah great point thank you for bringing okay. that up yeah because when I go to networking events I'm not only showing the magazine I'm like this is my magazine I produced this but then I just turn it over because I have my full page ad for my photography on the back so I can actually show them this is my work not yes. only in design of the magazine, but this is my photography work as well. So it gives me something tangible that I can show people because, and that's what I tell people who are also entrepreneurs and business owners, because I'm doing a lot of product photography as well now too. I tell people, you need beautiful photographs to showcase your work. Because if you have a headshot, that's a cell phone. If you have cell phone images of your products, they don't do your products or yourself justice. People want to see you in the best possible light, in the best possible photographs, especially the products you're selling, because that is what is going to give them the very first impression of who you are and what you're offering them. Boy, you're telling me so many things for my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get my dreams and goals off the Sunday <laughs> show too. <laughs> oh my God. The, the whole thing is everybody learns when we start sharing our story. Everybody learns. Here I'm interviewing people and I'm thinking, ah, that's what I need to do. That's what I could do. <laughs> yeah. And that's why in every one of my feature articles, when I interview people, I have them fill out a, a questionnaire online. But one of the questions is, what advice? or wisdom or lessons learned, would you like to share with other aspiring entrepreneurs or artists? Because every feature is a way for people to share their knowledge, their expertise, and for someone else to be inspired or motivated. This is a magazine that is meant to help people learn about new businesses they may want to start or new ways that they can manage their business. Because I, every entrepreneur that I feature I also ask them what are your challenges how are you overcoming uh, yes them? so this is a way for people to learn what can I do that somebody else is doing what problem are we do we have in common that maybe they have a solution that I haven't thought about before so it yes it feeds you but it also feeds your audience opportunities mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you what are some challenges that you're <laughs> 
I'm going to take your strategies here. <laughs> what are some challenges that you are facing or foresee that you may be facing in the next couple of years or three years? Uh, my biggest challenge is, particularly with the magazine, is just everything's going digital and more and more people are not picking up print magazines just or advertisers not wanting to put money towards print because they are saying everybody, everything's on social media. That's what they're putting their money towards. Unfortunately, going forward for the next few issues, um, until I can get more advertising support, it's going to be, have to be digital because print costs, paper costs have just skyrocketed. I can't afford to keep printing these. So it's all going to be digital issues. Just getting the word out. This magazine is in all 50 states digitally. I have readers all over the country, all over the world even. I'm in uh, 26 different countries, which is great. But for some reason, advertisers, unless you have millions of subscribers on social media or whatever, they don't care. They want advertise they want to advertise only on social media or only in publications where they're targeted towards tourists and I'm thinking this magazine is not for tourists this is for people who are in our communities uh -huh. who are looking to improve our communities through uh -huh. their businesses through their community advocacy through their artistry this is for people who want to support other small business owners mom yes. and pop not the yes. big chain stores not the big box stores the small businesses are the ones that are the foundation of our communities. Why aren't we doing anything to help those businesses stay in business? Yes. So that's why I created this because we're all small businesses. And when you don't support the local restaurant, that's not a chain. When you don't support the local general store or artist who's trying to support themselves through their artistry, you're really hurting your local community because then you've got all these empty downtown locations where there's no reason for people to come into town. Everybody's ordering online. Yes. Amazon is great. I order from Amazon a lot myself, but too. if there is a way that I can get it locally through and support another local business owner, I'm going to do that first. Yes. I Oh, I agree. Uh we're losing, and, and I'm not one of those that holds on to the past. I, I'm a person who is very much about the future and coming up with uh, new ideas. However, there we don't need to throw the old-fashioned saying is the baby out with the bathwater, because I think that there are many things, traditions, if you will, that um, have caused us to survive as a country and small businesses to succeed, which I believe are the backbone of our country, of the United States, the, the small businesses. Is, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And the more we start to support that, and me too, I order from Amazon. One thing about Amazon, and I don't know if this is good or bad, you might have, but you may not want to comment on it, but they do sell products of small businesses. Does that destroy the small business? Do people lose track of the small business? Because sometimes when I order something, it'll come from a small business. And then that small business sends me a survey. Yeah, and I contact them. I even met one woman through that when I ordered some skincare, and I met her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I, what is your thought on that? I think it's good that the, it gives small businesses another option, another way to get out there. Yeah. It would be nice if Amazon said, "Hey, this is a small business," and and ah. I, I'm sure there probably are ways, but I've never really paid yeah. attention to look Me to either. see. But if there are ways to say, hey, this is a woman-owned business, this is a veteran-owned yes, business, this that is a Black-owned business, that or have a section where say, hey, if you want to support Black-owned businesses or his Latino businesses, here are some that offer some of the products that you yes. are looking at. Because they always, on Amazon, they'll give you this row of things that are similar to what you've looked at or purchased. Yes. Why not say, hey, here are some other vendors who are uh, minority owned or women owned who offer the same products that you may Absolutely. be interested in supporting. Absolutely. That would, because I know that they struggle now too with uh, monopoly kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, issues in the marketplace, but I think that would take that 
partially away if they started to support, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that they are focused on this business or even children businesses. There are so many That's, children yeah. of your 14 year old because I am a big advocate of children. There's a woman out in, I think it's New Mexico that has kids first. And I don't know if you've ever met her, but she puts all these young people out there and what they do is critique movies for mm. the value of movies. And these kids are up to, I think, up to 20, but some of them are 11 years old. And the articles they write about, it, it's fabulous. We yeah. have a brilliant young group coming on board. And oh, I yeah. know sometimes we don't hear good things about them. My grandson is six, or is 11 years old now. He will be in November. And he authored a book when he was six years old. It's on Amazon. Yeah. So they're just doing all kinds of great things oh, yeah. out there. I wanted to know another thing. You said you had your magazine in all countries. How did you go about doing that? When I go to my Google Analytics, because there's a when you have a web page, you can go to Google Analytics and it'll give you a little pixel code that you just uh, include in your settings for your web page, yes. for your website. And it will actually track who goes to your web page, what area they're in, what pages they're looking at, how long they've spent on your website. Yes. It's extremely useful just to see that information and be able to know, okay, where are my readers coming from? And where are people coming from that and what pages are they looking at the mm -hmm. most so it's very helpful and I really encourage everyone anyone who has a website go get that it's uh, analytics.google.com I believe and just set it up it's no cost to you but it does allow Google to track everything that's going on your website but that's useful information just to know because that's something I put in my media kit I can let advertisers know hey I've got readers in all 50 states, That's, if you're trying to get a nationwide reach, this is where they are. That is exactly what I was wondering if you were going to say that it helps. How do you, is that one way you get advertisers in your magazine? And who, if someone wanted to advertise that's listening, how would they go about doing that? I get advertised. Most of my advertisers have been people that I've actually met through networking. They're people that I know when I first did the first issue, they were people that I knew that I had done business with and said, Hey, I'm starting this magazine. I actually did a sampler that I had printed up of the first issue too. So I could show people, this is what my vision is. And I showed that and said, Hey, would you be willing to advertise and I my first issue had six advertisers wow and of those three I didn't I had just met for the first time so I would um definitely, are they mostly local or are they they're mostly local and that's also another challenge too because even though I'm a national magazine yes I don't have a lot of contacts in these other states and some advertisers they feel like maybe it's too local to me yeah. And but I tell people it's a digital magazine. It's not local. I cover people all over the United States. My next issue is going to be featuring a woman who owns a travel company. She just moved to Costa Rica, but okay. she travels and does trips for women all over the world. So I hopefully can get more yeah. advertisers from other areas. People can always go to my website and get the media kit and or contact me directly. I just moved my website from one um, host to another. So it's still um, got some kinks to work out. But if there's ever an issue, people can always just call me or, or email me. And I'm more than happy to talk with them about advertising. But um, my media kit with all the pricing and all the options are available online. What is offer... that? What, while we're talking about that, what is that website? And it's, we'll uh, have it on the posting too, but what is that website if somebody wants to yeah, get it today? It's www.theenvoyguide.com. So T-H-E-N-V-O-Y guide, G-U-I-D-E dot com. It's basically the name of the magazine itself. And I had to go with the Envoy Guide because there are so many envoys out there apparently. And but I added guide because it really is a guide for people, a guide to enhance your life, start a business, 
get all Con types of information. Yeah, so connect I, with other people. Yeah. <laughs> and you said they could also email you. Do you want to share your email or do you? Uh, sure. What? Yeah, it's in it's just info i n f o at the envoy guide.com. Okay. So if any of you are interested after this, you could go to our website and learn more, but I wanted to make sure that we didn't forget that today because advertise, get your information out there. And it's another way to just people's opinion, isn't it? They can you can find if you advertise, do you have three months, one month or? Uh, uh, the issue, the magazines come out three times a year. Yes. So it's three issues and uh, they come out March 1st, July 1st and November 1st. But there's also a directory in the back and I have advertising rates that fit any budget. I have people say, well, I don't have an advertising budget. You can get a directory for $75 for the whole year. Yes. Who can afford $75? And the directory is actually like a yellow pages. It actually is meant to help people find you and be able to say, hey, I'm looking for an accountant. I'm looking for somebody in retail. So I want people to be able to use this like a yellow pages. And yes. so that's only $75 for all three issues. I also have display ads. The smallest display ad, I believe, is like 275 for just one issue. But if you advertise in all three issues, you get a 15% discount off the whole year. There are also sponsorships where sponsors actually not only get either a full page or a two page ad, they can write their own article that they are a sponsor of to help educate the readers too. They can also put in up to a one minute video of extra tips that tie into their video or is promotional about their product. So I give a number of options for people to get as much exposure as possible from the advertising and sponsorships. And yeah, also I have an e-newsletter. A newsletter? I do have an e-newsletter. And every time um, the e-newsletter -news goes out, the display ads are included with links to the advertiser websites. I'm trying to give every advertiser as much opportunity to connect with the readers as possible. That's it. Oh my gosh. There is so much, I, I'm learning so much more about your business too. And it's really exciting because I think initially I only, I knew about the magazine, but I'm learning so much more today. And I know this is helpful to our audiences because whether they decide to start a magazine or not, just seeing that they could advertise in your magazine isn't and they could afford it. I have one other question, and yeah. I think it would be something that they might my audience might ask. And I'm interested too. Do you, if someone's interested in talking to you about being in the magazine or advertising in the magazine, do you do consultation to help them say this is a strategy that you should? take this, this would be a good place for you to start, or this would be a good place. This is how I would write it up. Do you help them with that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, like I said, when someone wants to get featured on my website, the get featured form is on there. And it's basically a questionnaire. Each feature is the questionnaire itself. So that when the readers read about a certain business or entrepreneur or artists, they're hearing your words. It's in your language. I do, um, if necessary, edit because I want everyone to, because there are a lot of people who, like I said, you say a lot of likes. So I edit as necessary, but I, and I also send the mock-up back to each feature per um, subject before it ever publishes so that they can, if they want to change some of their language a little bit, if they um, have updated some of their information by the time it publishes. I want everyone to be seen in the best possible light. So yes, I will go over it on the phone with you. I will edit it and send it back um, to make sure that it's in the right tone, in the right wording that you want to use so that yes. people understand it's your words and not mine. And I also, if there are people interested in advertising, say, hey, what is your budget? What are you looking to promote? Are you promoting just, are, is it just for self-awareness? Are you promoting a product? 
Are you having a sale or something? So yeah, I want to make sure people are getting the most out of their advertising dollar with me because I want it to be something that they will want to continue supporting yes, and, definitely. and spending money on. Yes. Fantastic. There are no reason to say I can't now. <laughs> You're no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, even getting featured. At one point, I was um, offering features for free, but because of cost, my, it's only $50 if you want to get a feature. And my features, depending on how much information you provide on the forms, I've got features. This one feature for the woman who uh, does a travel company, her feature is six pages long. Some features are one page, some are two to three pages. It really depends on what your story is. And so for $50, you can get a one to six page feature, basically. And that goes out three times a year, right? Yes. That at, yes. Yeah. I publish three times a year. Yeah. There is no reason to not get your dreams off the Sunday shelf and start getting clear about <laughs> the clients you want and how you want to market it because Javette has set the whole thing up and she's making it affordable because she wants to help entrepreneurs get the best that they can, a best start that they can with their business and continue to make the business grow. Yvette, is there anything that you'd like to say as we, I, I, first of all, I am telling you, this has been a delight. Me learning, but it's exactly what I want our audience to get as getting clear about what is it you want to do and ways that you can go about challenges you might face the way you break through those, I think we've given them a little bit of everything today, as well as a place to advertise that is affordable and to get photography done. Um, I, I think oh, there's no excuses now. Get those dreams off that someday shelf out there. <laughs> Are yeah. there any uh, closing comments that you'd like to say to our audience uh, about dream living their dreams and going after them and if a business is it anything you'd like to say just as a human being on your own journey oh yeah just basically if you do have a dream if there's something you've always wanted to do if you have a hobby that you really love and you'd rather be doing that than working because try to learn as much as you can but don't be afraid to just go ahead and do it, even if it's part-time, and then you can lead up to going full-time. My thing is that I was in a job for 13, no, 11 years. Oops, sorry about that. For 11 years, and I wasn't happy. I started doing photography and the magazine, and I love what I do. It's something that really ignites my passion and my soul. I love meeting new people. I'm meeting people who are all over the country and learning new things myself. So don't be afraid to, like we said, get out of your comfort zone. Even if it's just one thing that takes you into a new location and new meeting new people, try it and see what comes of it. You have nothing to lose basically by just attending a, a networking meeting. I do recommend look into joining your chamber of commerce. Uh, the chamber of commerce here, and um, I've joined the one in Asheville and it's the, I believe it's like the largest chamber of commerce in the country and the most active. Mm. They have been so supportive. I have, they have a poster of all of my covers or at least for each cover in their visitor center. So when people come in, they see the cover of the magazine. They have photos of my photography in there. So get out there and look for new ways to promote yourself and not be afraid to talk to people and go to new places to get people to know who you are and enjoy the journey just enjoy it and I think you'll find it's very rewarding working for yourself or just doing something that really ignites your passion uh, that last part especially I like something that ignites our passion I think so much of the time you said it earlier we get in a comfort zone and we just settle mm -hmm find something you love because somebody else thinks it's a great idea and they're going to step up 
and say, I want to be part of that. Sometime I'm going to get on here because I've recently started High Heels Cabaret. And I cannot believe the people that are coming up and saying, I want to be part of that. I want to help you with that. It's So we just have to get it out there and let people know, like Yvette was saying. And one way is through her magazine. Other ways are through networking. Other ways are joining chambers or groups that could support what you're doing. So Yvette, thank you for such an enlightening session. And I love the part that it's such a heart session. It was just like coming from the heart mm-hmm. of, and including everybody in it. So that's what this world is all about. So thank you, my hello self listen or podcast listeners i'd like to say thank you for being here and let me hear from you about something that you picked up today that was of value and you've got you will have the website for yvette so you can learn more about her on her website and as i always say as we close out each session keep dreaming Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.